Hey guys, today I'm going to show you a little bit of an IKEA hack. I've got two IKEA Hemness shoe cabinets here, left and right, and I've joined them to create one seamless TV cabinet. I chose these cabinets because they're fairly narrow and the space that we have to work with isn't very large. We're working actually in a condo, so we want to maximize the floor space. Uh, for the top, I've gotten rid of the top that it came with and I've chosen a oak live edge piece of wood and I've treated it, taken the bark off and put a finish on it. And so that creates also a seamless top so that you don't have to try and join two tops where there'll be a seam in the middle there. So I'm just gonna walk you through the steps of creating the left and then the right side and then how to join it. And if you have any questions, let me know. So I just wanted to show you some of the things that I did to join both Hemnes cabinets together. The left side uh, was assembled completely as per the instructions. Uh, it's totally assembled minus the top because I'm doing a, a single piece all the way across so I didn't put the top on. So that was assembled as per the instructions 100%. On the right side I also assembled this per the instructions. However, I just didn't put this leg on, this left leg here. I didn't put that left leg on and I also didn't put uh, the piece here, the side piece here that should be here. So the side piece that should be here, uh, it's now mounted here to this leg. So this center leg, uh, rather than having two legs, there'll just be one. And that will be the center leg. And it now has the two side pieces uh, mounted to it. And both of them are the same thickness as the leg itself. So that works out perfectly. So this left side was assembled perfectly. To make this side piece work, you had to drill four holes in the back of the leg. And the four holes are optional because it's two of these metal holes and two of these wooden dowels. You don't have to put the wooden dowels in if you don't want to, so you can just, you could get by with drilling two holes only. So this is the leg that should be in place. And let's take a look at the back of it. So this is the first set of holes and down below has a second set of holes. Okay, and so just looking at the side piece here, you're not able to see the holes, but the holes line up with this screw and it's in the back here, it's behind the leg. And the second one is this one here and it comes right here into the back of the leg here. So actually I have four holes in the back of this leg that I had to drill, two here and two here. And that corresponds with the leg that should be in place. That's the back of it here. So one of the first things I did is to measure the depth of the holes. And I just wrap tape around the drill bits just to make sure that you don't go too deep or anything like that. So there's three different sizes of holes. The smallest hole is, let me just take a look here, 3 sixteenths of an inch. And see, I just measure the depth of it there. And this is a 3 16 drill bit. And what's going in the small hole is this metal screw here. These metal screws. So that's the small hole here. This next size up is 5 16 and 5 16 is for the wooden dowels. So that these, are, these are the wooden dowels here. One, two, three. And this is a 5 16 drill bit. And again, just measure the depth of the hole, put a piece of tape around it and make sure that you don't go too deep or it's too shallow. So that's 5 16 here and 5 16 there. The third size drill bit that you'll need is a 3 8 and this one's a little bit thicker and there's only two of these. Uh, one is here, see you just measure the depth of the hole and another one here. And what's going in the 3 8 hole are uh, these clips here. So there's these clips that the drawers or, or uh, little cubby doors open and clip into. And that's one here and one here. Okay, let me just get back to the leg here. So as previously mentioned, we drilled four holes in the back of the middle leg just so that we can mount this side piece. Now in this side of the leg, because Remember that this side of the leg here is supposed to be exterior facing like there's supposed to be no holes or anything It's supposed to look like this over here. It's supposed to look like this 
So this is what it's supposed to look like. And on this side, we had to drill 10 holes. So on the back side were four holes here. And then on this side is 10 holes. And all you're really doing is replicating the holes that are on the leg that you didn't put on. So here I'm holding up the leg that I didn't put on and I just basically replicated the holes. So remember the small holes are 3 16 of an inch. The biggest hole is 3 8 of an inch. And then the medium sized holes for the wooden dials are 5 16 of an inch. So I just wanted to also show you what the top looks like. I'm not putting the top on, but this is what the top would look like. Uh, naturally the top has an overhang of about an inch. And because I'm butting two cabinets up together, it would be impossible to have the top here. Now, some people do cut the top, like you can cut it here in the middle, and then that would look like that, and then you're able to have the two tops together. But I don't like that because then there will be a seam down the middle, and you'll have exposed uh, particle board, which, I don't know, that bugs me. If any water gets on it or anything, it's just going to swell right up. And if you move it down, then you'll have a bigger overhang like that. So I didn't really like that. So... I'm scrapping the top all together and I'm just going to do one piece of uh, maybe like stained pine or something. So I just wanted to show you a tip for lining up your holes because this is crucial. If, if your holes aren't lined up perfectly, uh, it's, it's not going to fit and you're going to get frustrated. So I took the leg that I'm not using here on the left in my left hand and you can line it up. Just make sure the top is flush with the leg that you will be drilling into. And you can use a square like this and just hold a square and you can go up and you can draw your lines right across. Obviously I can't do that now because I have things filling the screw holes, but that's kind of what I did at the time when I did it. This is just to show you what you can do if, if you have something else that works, by all means you can do that as well. So like I would come up with a square and then like that I'd draw the holes or draw the lines for the holes right across just like that. Another tip for drilling the four holes in the back of the leg here is you may have to remove this side piece. And the reason is if you have a, a drill that's thick, uh, it won't be able to fit in here to actually drill the hole perfectly perpendicular to the wood. You might be coming in at an angle like that. And I kind of did that. I, I was a little bit lazy and I left the side piece here on and I drilled it. And you can see the wood is a little bit angled, but once I clamp it down and screw it in together, uh, it's not, there'll be no more gaps. So that's kind of another tip is if you feel inclined, you can remove this side piece here just so that you can screw in the holes perfectly perpendicular and they're not really at an angle. And it will be just like that once it's clamped down and in place. So this is the completed cabinet now. I've finally joined the right side to the left side and they're sharing a single leg. I'll just show you what it looks like. You can see the two side pieces here. Um, I've also added a bolt going through both side pieces just to hold it together. Uh, I chose this cabinet because it's fairly narrow and the space that we have to work with uh, is not very big so this will work well. Um, I'll just open up a couple of the drawers or doors for you to see. That's it there. Uh, the plan is now to get a live edge piece of wood and put it across the top, uh, something like oak or maybe pine, uh, and that will complete the look.